two years ago, I did a top five Alaskan cartridges video. It did relatively well. It reached audiences uh, in Alaska, and I quickly learned that uh, I might have gone a little big on my cartridge selection. So I was picking big Weatherby cartridges like a 378 Weatherby, a 375 H&H, &H, a 340 Weatherby. And uh, Alaskans were quick to correct me and saying, hey, we use the same stuff you use down in the lower 48. So 30-06, 270, 7 millimeter Remington mag, and 300 Winchester Magnum. In this video, I'm going to talk about ideal cartridges uh, for grizzly bear slash brown bear. So let's talk about the top five bear cartridges. Before I get into my top five, I just want to give some honorable mentions. Uh, these two cartridges in front of us are some of the most popular cartridges you can get today. And they're perfectly adequate for grizzly bear, whether that's in Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, or the big grizzly slash brown bears in Alaska. In fact, the Alaskan uh, Game Management, their smallest recommendation is a 180 grain out of a 30 out 6 Springfield. So that's their recommendation. I also think the 7 millimeter Remington Magnum uh, can do it pretty easily too. Starting out at number five is my personal number one choice. But since it is a bit of a niche cartridge, that not a lot of people are, might not want to shoot or want to pay to shoot. I have the 340 Weatherby Magnum at number five. Now, the 340 Weatherby is an absolute powerhouse. You know, it is the 300 Weatherby necked up to 338. And boy, is it just an, an absolute hammer. A 225 grain bullet at 3,000 feet per second. And if I was gonna choose a bullet weight for this cartridge uh, for dangerous game, I'd go 250 grain. Uh, maybe a partition or an Accubond. And in a 340 Weatherby, you can get it at least 2,900 feet per second. I know some hound loaders have gotten it to 3,000 feet per second. And Weatherby factory ammo has a 250 grain partition at 2,950. Coming in at number four, I have a pretty big cartridge, the 375 Ruger. Now, what's so special about the 375 Ruger? Why would you get it over a 375 H and H? Well, you're going to get the exact same performance as a 375 H and H, but in a much more portable gun. So, as you can see here, the barrel length is 20 inches, while say you're going to do maybe a 24 inch barrel on a 375 H and H, or even longer. So it's a pretty cool cartridge, and I've kind of eaten my words uh, from a couple months ago. I kind of thought the 375 Ruger was kind of a dead cartridge, but I'm learning that uh, it's actually quite alive and well, doing pretty well. So let's look at the performance. A 250 grain at 2,700 feet per second, 270 at 27 again, and then you can shoot up to a 300 grain. Hornady says almost 2,600 feet per second. So it's it's a big guy. Coming in at number three is the 3378 Weatherby Magnum. Now this cartridge is the fastest factory produced 30 caliber Magnum you can get. So what kind of performance are you going to be getting out of this big cartridge? Well, think 200 grain at 3300 feet per second. Oh, now you can shoot smaller bullets and you're getting crazy velocities, but uh, I think this really excels with some heavier bullets. And so you could shoot a 220 grain well over 3,000 feet per second, probably 3,100. Uh, it's just, well, it's fast. Is it efficient? Absolutely not. Uh, and then kind of to see the size comparison, let me pull out that 30-06 again. And you can just see... Look at that. Uh, in fact, I think you're doubling the case capacity of the 30 out 6 with this 30 378 Weatherby. So definitely enough power for any grizzly or brown bear in Alaska. 
At number two is another 30 caliber. This one, not quite as overbore and crazy velocities, but it's the most popular 30 caliber Magnum, and it is just a darn good performing cartridge. Number two, 300 Winchester Magnum. The 300 Winchester Magnum introduced in 1963, and its parent case is the 375 H&H. &H. Now it's shortened down to kind of an odd length. It is very unique, only 2.620 inches. Several years before that, Winchester introduced the 338 Winchester Magnum, but that one is, the case length is 2.5 inches. So Winchester in 1963 wanted to do a little bit more power, a little bit more case capacity. And so this is what we have. It's got quite a short neck uh, because it is going to fit into a standard length action. So the cartridge overall length is 3.340 inches, just like a 30-06. Uh, the performance is a bit better than a 30-06. Let's go ahead and look at it. So. I'd say 150 grain bullet is a little light for a brown bear, but you can get that going 3,300 feet per second. Let's look at the 180 grain bullets, 3,100 feet per second. I still think 180 grain is a little light. And so for me, my personal taste, I'd want a 200 grain bullet, not in the ELDX, but probably a partition or an Acubond. And you can handle those to 2,900 and you probably could get a little bit more. Uh, 300 Winchester Mag is just so versatile and it's got plenty of power. At number one, it's no surprise, it is the 338 Winchester Magnum. When it was introduced, it was introduced as the Alaskan cartridge. And it's also been known as the Perfect Elk cartridge. It's just a really efficient powerhouse Magnum. Again, it's based off the 375 H&H. Now, again, when we compare it to the 300 Winchester Magnum, again, as I said, this one is 2.5 inches and this one's 2.62. But uh, even at a shorter case, this thing is a lot more efficient and you're getting some really good performance. 338 Winchester Mag with a 200 grain ball, it's 3,000 feet per second. So it's a little bit quicker than a 300 Win Mag. Again, that's the efficiency coming into play. I think the perfect weight for the 338 Win Mag is the 225 grain. And you can get that going 2,800 feet per second. Again, I would use a partition, maybe even the 225 GMX or a TTSX or an Acubond. A lot of Alaskans use it. It definitely, in my book, is probably the number one choice for availability and a good mix of power. Now I just wanted to show you these five cartridges and what the numbers look like on paper. So what kind of power you're really getting. In a 340 Weatherby Magnum, the 250 grain partition, you can get that going 2950 feet per second. By the way, this is factory ammo and your energy is an incredible 4,800 foot pounds of energy. To kind of put it into perspective, a 30-06, hand-loaded to max velocity is going to have around 3,200 foot-pounds of energy. Number four, 375 Ruger with a 300 grain bullet going 2,660 feet per second, which is kind of funny. They have their factory ammo going faster than what they said you could hand-load it. Kind of interesting. Remember, with this 375, you're with a 20-inch barrel. So uh, the mobility of this rifle is pretty sweet. 4,700 foot-pounds of energy pretty darn good. Going on to number three with the 30 378 Weatherby with a 220 grain bullet. Factory ammo has it at 3,050 feet per second. It's of course a Weatherby so it's gonna have a lot of power. 4,500 foot-pounds of energy. At number two with the 300 Winchester Magnum. Again I would lean more towards a bigger bullet. I think 180 grain like Alaska says is uh, probably the smallest bullet I would use. Uh, I think a 190 grain LRX would be really good. And that ammo is going, factory ammo is going 2,870 feet per second, almost 3,500 foot pounds. So it is uh, the weakest of these five, uh, but the popularity, the choices of ammo 
And of course it's got plenty of power to kill a brown bear. Number one, 338 Winchester Magnum with a 225 grain CX bullet from Hornady. They are saying you can get 2,800 feet per second and your energy is almost at 4,000 foot pounds. So 39, 17. Again, it's just an all around good performer. You know, it's not gonna be crazy like the weather bees or as big as like the 375 Ruger. I think it just fits into a nice uh, balance of power efficiency. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what your top five brown bear cartridges would be. And uh, we'll see you next time.